And welcome back to Your American Story. This is your host, Raja. And joining me right now is Ginny Prabanik, President and CEO of MedRespond. MedRespond is a healthcare information technology company commercializing software that improves patient engagement, streamlines healthcare communications, and optimizes patient satisfaction. Ginny is a seasoned entrepreneur, having founded and managed an array of companies ranging from sports marketing to fiber optics to healthcare. Ginny has a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Pittsburgh, uh, from University of Pittsburgh, and an MBA from Carnegie Mellon. Ginny will be pitching to our three investors. Again, our three investors who you heard from in prior segments um, are Jim Jordan from PLSG, Ned Renzi from Birchmere, and Mike Stubler from Draper Triangle Ventures. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the format for today. Ginny will start with a four-minute pitch to our three investors. We have already decided the order in which our investors will ask questions. Each investor gets three minutes to use as they choose, either to provide feedback or ask questions. The responses from the entrepreneur will be included in this three-minute segment. And after the investor segments, Ginny will have one minute to make a closing statement. Daryl Grandy, our radio producer, will hold out the yellow flag one minute out and the red flag when time is up. Ginny, uh, investors and Ginny, welcome. Ginny, you have four minutes. Please proceed. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce you to MedRespond, where our passion is supporting patients in their healthcare journey. Supporting patients has never been more important than today. Newsweek just reported that healthcare is about to consume 20% of the U.S. economy by 2021. So something has to change. Even if we could afford it, there's not enough doctors and providers to deliver the care the traditional way. So how do we fix it? One significant answer is that we address the patient engagement gap. And that's the gap between patients ignoring their um, care plans or following them. This is one of the largest opportunities to improve care and to reduce costs. And not surprising, it also represents one of the biggest opportunities in healthcare today. It's estimated at a $290 billion market US, a trillion dollar globally. That's one of the first points I want to make. We're in a trillion dollar global market. And we have superior solutions. We have automation with a personal touch. We simulate the good old fashioned communications one on one that used to be the norm in healthcare. When patients interact with a MedRespond video coach, they see a professional healthcare provider engaging them in a conversation and answering their questions. Our coach is there around the clock, 24 7, at 3 a.m. when you really need your answers. Ours is a patented solution that was developed by those geniuses at Carnegie Mellon. And we know it works because we've got the data. MedRespond created a program for newly diagnosed breast cancer patients. We helped them understand what their treatment options were, including clinical trials. At the end of this study, what we found is they stayed on the program for an hour. That's 59 minutes longer than your average competitor. They posed 45 questions. That's engagement. And they were three times as likely to re participate in a clinical trial. And those are the kind of results that resonate with clinical trial providers. So how did we take this technical success and turn it into a market success? Well, what we did is we started sending out PR and going to conferences and describing what our success has been. That resonated with a very important agency that is now our partner, MMG. MMG is in Rockville, and they're really significant because of they're one of the 200 Omnicon Group agencies, the $15 billion uh, major agency group. Um, we started working with them, and three months ago, we announced a strategic international global partnership in clinical trials, and I actually provided you with that press release. And it's going strong. This year, we expect to close 10 clinical trial joint projects by the end of 2014. And next year, we want to close more and begin working through more of the agencies across the 200 that are part of the Omnicon Group. So we've seen how to convert a project into a success, and now we can do it again in patient engagements with palliative care and preparing for surgery. We do this with eight employees and a big staff of our support group in Pittsburgh. Our current revenue is getting rewarded from the success. We're on track to quadruple last year's revenues. What's next? Faster growth. We're transforming our processes and software 
into an ability to license our solutions to the 20,000 ad agencies and web designers around the country. Why is that important? Because health IT multiples have never been higher. There are many who are comparing this to the dot com. I think they're right. There's a 22 EBITDA multiple. That means if we can reach the 20 million in revenue, we have a company that can exceed 88 billion million in value. And that's what we'd like to work on with you. So help us get there. Thank you, Ginny. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard Ginny Prabanik, President and CEO of MedRespond, pitch to our investors in the Running with the Bulls contest in con that we are running in conjunction with Pittsburgh Life Sciences Greenhouse. At this point, I'm going to turn this over to our first investor, Jim Jordan from PLSG. Jenny, thank you for the presentation. Um, maybe a little deeper understanding as it relates to the technology. I've always sort of looked at it as YouTube meets Ask Jeeves. And am, am I correct in that, that I can ask a question in the way that I want to ask it and the appropriate video vignette comes back to me? Is that is that? Right, and that's the magic that was provided by the researchers at CMU. We're using linguistic modeling combined with a customized um, search that allows us to find relevant answers to questions. And so it really does. It simulates a dialogue. I ask, is asthma contagious? And the next thing that comes back is a video of a doctor saying, no, it's not contagious. In fact, it's genetic and it's both. That, that is exactly what the technology does, Tim. Okay. So that, that sort of helps me because the market size that you talked about for healthcare, generally that's a pretty big segment. But what you have is enabling technology here, which to me also sort of works on the manufacturing side in addition to the service side. Can you maybe explain the different markets and why people would be interested in that? Well, I, what we're finding is that pharmaceutical companies are very interested in explaining to doctors as well as patients how their medications work. Um, especially with some of the specialty meds that are coming out today. Now you can get your oncology medication in a pill, but that pill, it can be very hazardous if it's not handled properly. So we're using our technologies in a collaboration with the Oncology Nursing Society to explain how those medications can be properly used and best used. Um, at the same time, we're using our technology for major pharmaceuticals to help answer questions for doctors about the new medications that are coming out, um, some uh, with an involving me um, mechanism of action. It's very complicated to get that message across in a 30-second prompt, but people can go to our websites that explain medications. Typically, they have 200, 250 responses there. So every doctor who goes there, no matter how, what their question, walks away from the site getting their answers. So I was reminded recently, um, uh, watching one of your videos on cancer, that one of the challenges when someone gets um, such a difficult pronouncement that the other issue is not just compliance, but the person walks out never hearing the message in the first place. And if they don't have a partner or a caregiver, there's data on that that talks about the importance of that. So does your product also serve in that function? It, 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 we found that the people that we've used it with are newly diagnosed breast cancer patients that very much report that. When I heard my diagnosis, I faded. I had no idea what I heard next. When we did not done studies with women in that category, what we found is they get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and ask their questions. And they ask them, what we found is they come back the next day asking the same question again. And that's really interesting. It was surprised us why that would happen. But the physicians we work with are not surprised at all. They said the absorption of the information when you get um, a diagnosis happens over time. Today I'm ready for this level of information. Tomorrow I'm ready to dig deeper. And then I talk to my phone to my cousin and she asks something that's completely out of the blue. I can go back to that site and ask those questions and get my answers. Thank you. Thank you, um, Jim. At this point, I'll turn this over to Ned Renzi from Birchmere. Thanks, Roger. Uh, Jenny, maybe tell us a little bit about how you make money. What's your revenue model? The revenue model is um, different for the different agencies and the different models we serve. Right now, where I mentioned the relationship we have with the agency, we're doing that very much as an agency model of revenue, project-based. We recognize that that's really going to limit our multiples and values. So what we're doing right now is we're transforming our product from um, a turnkey where we do all the work and deliver the final product to you to one where we can take our software and our technology 
and we're packing it, packaging it in such a way that we can license it to each individual agency and they can build the, the um, programs themselves. So they can build the programs for all of their pharmaceutical agents. For every new drug that comes out, they can create an interview to answer doctors' um, questions. What that does is when we do the turnkey programs, it's a very high ticket price because you have to pay us for the content development, the video, and all of the back end services. But when we can partner with an agency that has hundreds of people in their staff that can handle the content and the cr video, then our part of that job becomes much less and it really allows us to push up margins. So, so it sounds like the business is in the process of evolving the current business model to pivot to one. Um, I don't know if it's more of a subscription model for, say, a content management system, if, that, if that's appropriate. If, if that's the case, what would your go-to-market strategy be for, for that new model? Well, since we're really partnering through agencies, we'd want to go through the agencies because ad, ad agencies and web developers are the ones who actually build these communication um, programs for the clients. And now, what you know, the brochure versus the website versus the mobile, they're all merging into one medium. So that's where we're going to go. Since we're already in Omnicom, mm -hmm. we'd like to penetrate further with the 200 agencies and deliver that software model through those channels. There's also Publicis. As you know, Omnicom and Publicis almost merged this year but have called that off. Um, so I think it's a very concentrated in industry, and when we reach into those markets, I, I think we'll be able to get the penetration that we need. Okay. If I can tell, and I, one of the things that's really attractive to the agencies, when they buy our product and they deploy it in this new model, their services are going to be in the magnitude of 10x what they pay us. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a red revenue generator for the agency. Mm -hmm. It's a very good partnership for them to have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ned. At this point, I'll turn it over to Mike Stubler from Draper Triangle. Ginny, <clears throat> you made the claim uh, that you, it's a trillion dollar market opportunity, which is a pretty ambitious, a pretty ambitious claim. And when you think about it, you know, today you're dealing with clinical trials in, in, in big pharma companies. And so you have a fairly finite number of pharma companies to, to sell to. And they're, they're doing clinical trials and trying to get better results, and so they're, they're willing to pay for this. So going beyond pharma and clinical trials, who's going to pay? What's, what's the motivation? Where's the, where's the source of the funding? Well, I think you can really look at there's two products that we're developing right now that I think really answer your question because they're not in clinical trials at all. We're developing one program that answers patients and families' questions about palliative care choices and end-of-life questions. And what it's designed to do is not only engage the patient in a dialogue, but now it opens up and through the, our video coaching, engages the whole family. And we begin to understand where people are in the process of making decisions. Have they accepted what's going on in their life? End of life is when nearly 50% of healthcare dollars are spent in the United States. And there's a lot of studies that show if people knew more, they wouldn't choose to be as aggressive in their, as a matter of fact, nearly every doctor I know, if I say how aggressive would you be, they tell me none. I, I would be not aggressive at all because it's really tough. What we're trying to do is educate people. Now, once that, we're doing that in collaboration with a, um, integrated health system right now. Our plan is once we've developed that and evaluated it, to be able to roll that same system out to educate people in other healthcare um, centers. Now, either through the hospitals, through payers, or through the integrated provider networks. So you think the, the insurance companies, the, the hospital systems will be willing to pay for this? If you, if you look at the model we have right now, it's, it's less than a quarter of an FTE per hospital to actually implement this. And, and once we're able to show the patient satisfaction, the family satisfaction, and we all know that now those satisfaction numbers are linked to your reimbursement. So for a very small fee, if you can increase your numbers, it, it's, a, it's a model that works. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the Q&A session from our investors. Thank you. Thank you, investors. 
while this contest does not have the same conflict as Shark Tank, and while our judges uh, are not being Mark Cuban in terms of drama, they are looking to make real investment in real businesses. And uh, we've gotten a behind the scenes look at this process uh, to find out about our investors' deci decisions. Uh, tune in on July 13th, so as we will hear live from them. Jenny, you have one minute now to make your closing statement. I think Raja asked me to address right now, why should we invest in you? And I want to reframe that because we're, we're a developed company. We exist. It's not investing, it's me, and it's about investing in our team. Because we're a team of people that are committed to delivering products to support patients. And it's timing. This timing is right, and as I've said, there's a lot of people who are comparing this time in healthcare and patient engagement to the dot-com. Believe it or not, I see call me at 7 o'clock. So this is an area that's getting attention. And I think we're right. This is the right time. And finally, don't you really want to see the first company to ever win the Nobel Prize in healthcare to be from Pittsburgh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Most certainly wish you uh, the best of luck in winning the Nobel Prize. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you for, uh, for uh, your presentation today. Our investors and entrepreneurs are focused on making an impact in our region by improving the quality of lives and creating jobs. And you too, ladies and gentlemen, can make an impact. If you liked what Jenny had to say, you can go to our website, Your American Story, and cast your vote for Jenny. Uh, by winning the audience award, she would get $2,500 cash and the recognition of being the winner, audience winner for this series. Uh, investors, thank you again for your participation. We're going to go to commercial break right now. This is your host, Raja, and I'll be right back.